Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In June 2020, a F-A-18 Super Hornet operating off the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt crashed while conducting routine pilot proficiency training. According to the pilots, the plane lost power just after launch, causing it to nosedive toward the water. The two crewmen were able to eject safely, but the plane, which cost around $60 million, quickly sunk beneath the waves. It was the first loss of an F-A-18 in several years and was ruled to be an accident based on equipment failure. However, the U.S. military was by no means content to leave its highly advanced fighter jets sitting at the bottom of the Arabian Sea. It took over a month of planning to get the U.S. Navy divers and explosive ordnance disposal team to the site aboard the USNS Catawba. This not only allowed engineers to investigate the crash further, but also to keep the plane from falling into enemy hands. A few years earlier, a similar incident took place on board the USS Carl Vinson. Two F-A-18Cs crashed into the Western Pacific Ocean after colliding in midair some seven miles away from the carrier. Several friendly ships were called in to help search for the missing pilots, and virtually all of the available helicopters were launched in order to cover as much of the open sea as possible. One of the pilots was found shortly after the incident, having ejected just in time to escape the crash. Unfortunately, despite more than two full days of searching using all available personnel and aircraft, the second pilot could not be located and had to be presumed dead. The irony of the loss is that the USS Carl Vinson and its crew were highly trained in dealing with flight deck accidents. A few years before, another F-A-18 suffered an engine fire immediately after taking off from the vessel. Fortunately, the pilot was able to use the remaining engine to land back on the flight deck, where the fire was put out immediately. To this day, crews aboard this and all aircraft carriers take their firefighting and crash training very seriously. This is a true testament to the professionalism and preparedness of the crew members, who were able to jump into action in a matter of minutes, even though the situation was still developing. Using powerful foam and hoses, they were not only able to save the aircraft, but potentially the rest of the ship. When it comes to preventing aircraft-related incidents aboard an aircraft carrier, one of the most important processes of all is known as the FOD walk. FOD stands for Foreign Object Debris, referring to any particle, substance, or even biological material that may be sucked into aircraft engine intakes. A FOD walk is where a line of crew members walks the entire length of the flight deck, looking for potential materials that may have ended up on the ground. It only takes a single item to do millions of dollars in damage to an aircraft. 
which is why there are strict rules regarding what can and cannot be allowed on the flight deck. Almost everything on board an aircraft carrier is strictly controlled and supervised. When it comes to the flight deck, much of this is handled from the integrated catapult control station, otherwise known as the bubble. From this position, ground crews can get an eye-level look at everything happening on board. They are also responsible for controlling the catabar system that actually launches the aircraft. To ensure each launch is successful, the men and women in the bubble must coordinate carefully with the pilots and crew members out on deck. At no point is the communication more important than during landing. In order to land aboard an aircraft carrier's small flight deck, pilots must come in nose up and catch an arresting cable with their plane's tail hook. Once this happens, the aircraft's kinetic energy is transferred to a series of hydraulics located below the deck. Without this process, the aircraft would never be able to come to a safe, sudden stop at such a short distance. These cables undergo extensive testing regularly in order to ensure they are ready to absorb the impact of multiple landing planes. These evaluations are performed by flight deck crews using small transport vehicles and handheld hooks. Even with the best preparation and attention to detail, it's impossible to prevent all accidents completely. Since World War II, there have been a number of incidents aboard aircraft carriers involving planes, crew members, and helicopters. In one situation, an E-2D Hawkeye was coming in for a landing aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, which had an arresting cable snap during landing. Fortunately, the pilot and his crew were able to think fast, powering up the plane's engines just in time to avoid hitting the ocean. This bought them time to circle around and attempt another landing. Nobody was injured, and the crew members were all awarded the Armed Forces Air Medal for Valor. No doubt, the most trying time for crews and pilots were in the early days of aircraft carrier development. During World War II, the U.S. military was still investigating what these new weapons of war might be capable of. Various trials resulted in multiple aircraft being lost over the side of the carriers, which were much smaller than today's modern nuclear-powered versions. During the infamous Doolittle Raid on Tokyo, the U.S. military even managed to launch full-sized B-25 bombers from the deck of the USS Hornet.
at 52 feet long and boasting a wingspan of 67 feet. Getting this plane in the air was quite an impressive accomplishment, especially considering each B-25 was loaded full of heavy-duty bombs. Nowadays, technology has helped to minimize the risk of training pilots drastically. A big part of this is due to the invention of high-quality, ultra-realistic simulators. Like this one for the F-16 Fighting Falcon. These simulators are capable of accurately modeling a wide variety of mission types, weapon systems, and ordinances. Its 360-degree display gives trainee pilots an entirely realistic experience that almost perfectly mimics actual flight. Best of all, this sort of training can be accomplished anywhere without putting any personnel or equipment at risk. Last but not least, it saves the U.S. military millions of dollars in fuel and man hours. Of course, no single invention since the parachute has saved more pilots' lives than the ejection seat. In the early days, pilots simply had to climb out of their cockpits and hope they didn't strike the wing or tail on the way. As aircraft got faster and faster, it became necessary to catapult the pilot as far away from the plane as possible, using a special seat equipped with high-powered rocket boosters. Over the course of decades, these seats were refined over and over again to maximize safety and capabilities. With modern systems, pilots can eject while on the ground and still deploy their parachutes to minimize injury. Because they are so important in the case of an emergency, all aircraft egress systems undergo frequent inspections and repairs to make sure they're in the best condition. This work is typically accomplished by men and women from the Aircrew Egress System Shop. Over the course of several hours, these highly trained technicians will remove the seat system and completely dismantle it. If they find anything that is damaged, worn, or needs replacing, they will address it immediately. Until the chair is completely recertified, it will not be returned to the cockpit. It's also important that the pilots themselves know what to do once they eject. This is where parachute training is absolutely invaluable. In many cases, this is done simply by having the trainees jump out of an actual aircraft. In recent years, however, the U.S. military has developed special simulators capable of recreating the ejection experience. These simulators are also handy in teaching alternative egress methods and in showing trainees how to steer their parachutes so they can get on the ground safely after their first jump. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.